Okay, so my name is Mike. Most people also call me Chef Mike, as I'm a chef originally. And I've been in Shanghai actually only since January. Uh, been in China mostly in Shenzhen since 2014. And then I came here in January and then that all lockdown happens right away as well. Um, so it was very interesting because in 2020 the lockdown wasn't as that strict, you know. I remember people being scared going out, so I was still running around empty street. You still feel freedom, could still have my coffee at 7-Eleven, uh, emergency coffee. <laughs> but at the end, you could walk around. This time was completely different, completely shut down, closing the gate, security say, you can't get out. And it was a def definitely a different feeling than what we had in 2020. So yeah, that's what's happening a little bit. And I think I can say that the first three days, there was this kind of strange feeling. Um, I don't want to call it depression, where you feel like a little bit empty and you think like, Jesus, what's going on? Because it feels like Armageddon. You, you look down on your window and maybe the weather in the first days actually was you're raining as well. And you feel like, oh, Jesus Christ. So it's the first time in seven years, eight years that I had that feeling of, I want to go home. <laughs> and that was a very special feeling because before I never really had that. And obviously we all know that a lot of foreigners left as well, so I can fully empathize with that part. Um, however, I jumped straight into work. I set up my apartment because I knew it's going to happen. We got the three days warning that we're going to be locked down. So I got computers and screens and my Wi-Fi set up, make sure I have uh, good data uh, with that I can, yeah, can do my job online. And then I've been actually busy two months. I wouldn't say uh, I was bored. So I just feel terrible for people who, who can't work from home, right? So for example, let's say restaurant chefs, etc., they basically can't do anything. They, you know, their restaurants is closed or anybody who working with his hands and non-digital, it becomes, uh, I think it can be very challenging. And then I even think about all that people who live in dormitories and being shut down. You live in a dormitory where you share a room of 15 square meter with two people what are your your co-workers and all of a sudden you lock down and if it's for a week it's fine but imagine you're on 15 square meter with three people what well, normally not even your family and we know how dormitories look like in China they're not really pleasant so I feel yeah I can I can definitely not complain uh, I was I was lucky and also the neighbor the neighborhood our neighborhood was you know they invited you into WeChat groups like we all know and everybody. I was not worried about my food. To be honest, even now, I said, if I run out of coffee, now I'm just sending a message in the group, is there anybody has coffee? So honestly, I don't even need to go shopping. There's always somebody who spares you something and I've been exchanging a piece of fish against a couple of eggs and stuff like this. So it was kind of the, the fun aspect of uh, the whole uh, journey of lockdown. I think food is really, really interesting to talk about. I mean. Um, what did you eat? How did that change? And um, what about your neighbors that, that you all saw? Like, um, how, did, how did things change? I, I think people took a little bit more time to cook because it, was, it became an entertainment for them, right? So you have lunch, dinner, breakfast, right? What for most people wasn't usual to have these three meals maybe. Um, I would go for one healthy meal once a day and then I basically do kind of a fasting, right? Not on purpose, I just feel comfortable with it. But then during that period, I've been also uh, actually stuck with my colleague uh, in my home because he came from Shenzhen and then he all of a sudden been with me, where it was also challenging because normally I don't stay so long very close with other people. Uh, so we start cooking lunch, dinner, breakfast all of a sudden. So you definitely got a weight gain, like at least the 5 kg would freak me out a month later and say, what the hell is going on? Like, lunch, dinner, breakfast, but you actually don't move enough either because you can't move. So you like you take all that in and you see everybody's cooking nice food and all that video that people don't have enough food. I can't say that to me. There was always enough. Maybe not all the luxury stuff you wish like to have, but all the basics, rice and veggies, they've been always around. Meat, there was a little bit shortage sometimes, but that was only for a little while. And honestly, um, yeah, it, it doesn't still alive without me. It's okay. I think 
from our first interactions, my impression was you guys were doing a lot of group buys, very deeply involved with it. What was that like? Yeah, so we are a B2B company, uh, what's selling a semi-finished product and also a frozen seafood, etc. More on a high quality base, so it's we're serving hotels and restaurants normally, less the B2C market. And what happened is that during that period, uh, because we've been lucky that our warehouse had a license still to the getting out two trucks a day during the whole time. So I was very lucky. So what happened is that uh, people opened compound groups and asked other people for food. And all of a sudden there was a flood of requests. And honestly, not lying, I mean, I might have another 2,000 contacts in two months has been added to me. So there have been groups opened and then all our colleagues, they open groups as well. And then we put our, our product list inside. Just, we didn't have any revenue anymore for hotels or restaurants. They all shut down in Shanghai. But what we did, uh, we just sent the same list and maybe more B2C. We told people how to use it because it's maybe not really a product what people are used to. So we start selling all that seafood and uh, sausages and finished product, we do, we do things like curries, we do uh, stews, tomato sauce, bolognese sauce, lasagna, everything what we serve to restaurants and hotels normally has been all of a sudden sent to, sold to B2C. So it was a new experience and actually this new sales channels evolved and of course what's exciting and now we try also to keep that channel going because that sales channel didn't exist before. So frankly speaking, business-wise I think it was a good thing because restaurant hotels return and now we have the B2C additional. Now will be the question how, how we can maintain this compound sales because I'm sure people are going to go back to their regular habit of buying on Meituan and go to supermarkets. So the compound buying might be uh, getting uh, reduced a bit. But let's see how we can uh, turn it around and keep that channel going. That will be amazing. Right? You mentioned that you guys had um, two licenses to drive. Uh, during the lockdown, mm -hmm. what was that like for the drivers? Like, I, I think you said they were stopped in the warehouse. Yeah, exactly. So they couldn't, uh, they couldn't go home because once you go home, then you can't get out. So they've been doing that period uh, working, and then they never could get out. So when this with a compound happening, uh, what they did, they sleep in their cars and just driving around the city. And I mean, it was kind of heroic as well because. Obviously, there have been shortages of food. So what they have done is definitely they kept the city alive. Like not only our company, a lot of companies who did the same thing uh, kept this alive. Of course, this is also about business and financial because it helps you to stay alive. But at the end of the day, uh, it's been feeding a lot of people who, who really maybe had nothing to eat. So yeah, they've been definitely the heroes of that whole two months lockdown. All the drivers and the people who are trying to get some food to the people, right? Absolutely. How was it for your other employees? How, how, how did they come through the lockdown and how do they feel now? What do you think the mood is? Uh, I think when we just got opened up and it, I, went, I was going out straight away and the city was still like, you didn't feel like people want to really go out. You know, people like taking it a little bit slow. And I think the reason is, I mean, at the end we had everything and many people worked from, uh, from home. Uh, our compound was a little bit more easy going. We have a big one, so there's a little river and there's some trees, so you could have, the, it was different than somebody who was a pure building and he can't go even in front of it. So very lucky for, for me. And so we even had, uh, we had some barbecues and stuff like this during the lockdown. We didn't post anything on WeChat because we don't want to make people feel uncomfortable. <laughs> but uh, the good thing is, uh, yeah, during that period, we didn't feel so bad. But even then after when it's now open, we don't feel like uh, so much change, to be honest. I think it all pushed it more into the online. I think that's the whole story out of it. This goes even more digital. People work more from home. You got used to work from home already and now it gives another push. And then some people I hear, they don't even want to go back to the office. Like they feel comfortable work from home and then you know, just go sometimes to the office. So I'm not judging if it's good or bad, but I think that's definitely the outcome out of it. So the mood, I think in general, 
first is this feeling of seeing everyone again. You can feel like people hugging each other and like, oh, hey, how are you? Long time no see. So there is really the joy of meeting uh, someone you didn't see for a long time. Absolutely. And yeah, but then I think things just carry on the way it was. I, how do you feel about, let's say, the next six months? Have your plans changed or is it the same? I think for me and maybe for everyone, um, knowing that this kind of things in, in China can happen all the time because we are not in control about uh, what's happening um, in terms of authorities, right? So I think the only thing is that we, we learn out of all that time, making sure that in terms of business, we, we are prepared for the next time this happen and maybe taking advantage out of it because there is ways of taking advantage out of it. For me, the last two months, I mean, became more stronger in website design, uh, in website development. I've been doing things I have never done so deep before, but it gave me a, it gave me a lot of joy. So I learned a lot of things and I realized that any time I spent now doing the two months, just uh, help the company a lot because I have doing things. Normally I go out and meet people, talk to face to face, but this time I could basically clean up my backyard, you know, like checking like, okay, how do I sell? Is there, is there products what, what I wish like to do always, but I didn't have the time to think about it, connecting to, to different factories and see what else can be done. So we had a lot of video calls and Zoom calls and team calls with different companies. So business was continue ongoing, to be honest. It just moved more digital. And so I, I actually think that's it's a good time to invest into anything digital. It makes you more independent uh, for this kind of situations. You, you can carry on with your things. Whether you're setting up, always have something at home to be uh, digital online, like let's say calls and video cameras, all that things. This one part and then the other part is like, okay, what about your customers? Do, do you receive your orders on a traditional way or maybe you invest in, in websites, mini programs and make things more, more convenient for people? That might help you in the next lockdown actually. So I would prefer for the next lockdown because uh, you can maybe there be the winner going out of it. Financially speaking, it's possible. <laughs> do you think there's going to be a next lockdown? I don't know. I, I didn't expect that to happen after two years. Absolutely not. Like after all that happened, that it, there was such a strict lockdown. I mean, Shenzhen had it like for a week very strict, but here, Jesus Christ, they did it for two months. So I did not expect that to happen. So we, I thought, everybody thought like, oh, April, okay, to May. And then it's like, they're gonna do another month. It's like, are you real? I didn't expect it at all. So hard to say. If the policy of zero COVID continues, I guess it will. But now you have a test, it's almost like a public toilet in every corner. So I guess that uh, they might give us the chance that we are so much monitored all the time with the testing that they will be able to lock down the tricks and get more control over it. If it's good, I don't know. But definitely having all that data allows the government to say, okay, that district closed, there was someone this close. Before we couldn't do that because you test yeah, in the area and just when you ask them to test, now you have to because you can't get into the building without 72 hours. So, It sounds like you generally made it through the lockdown in pretty good spirits, but what did you miss the most? What did you look forward to the most? I just miss my, my, the human interaction for business, right? So even business carried on, but you know, like there's so many things and exciting projects we're working on and people say like hey when is the lockdown finished when you come over we want to do this we want to do this and so i can't wait the quarantine part is over i go back to my home shenzhen and hang out a little bit over there because there's, there's a lot of going on for our company in shenzhen as well so i yeah i don't know i feel like uh what i will focusing on is just meeting all that people who've been shouting out and waiting for us to to see them and work on projects so yeah most of the projects are very exciting and then you feel like you want to do it but you can't because there's just so much things you can do online and then the other part you really have to be a hands-on on the ground and yeah that can't be done digitally at least not for now <laughs> well chef mike um, 
as there might be another lockdown and now we all know you can deliver during a lockdown, how do people find you? Um, actually, you can find you can find us easily. You can actually, if you type in on WeChat Chef Mike, you're gonna possibly find me. There's only one Chef Mike. You can find uh, find me definitely. If not, uh, you can also add my WeChat. It's one three three one six eight seven eight seven eight five. And yeah, feel free to contact us. But even without lockdown, you can contact us as well. If somebody is hungry or having a hotel or a restaurant and is interested in and products what are uh, less ordinary right, and more special, then please contact us. It will be awesome working with you. I appreciate you taking us to this wonderful garden up here. Thank you very much. You're welcome.